everybody. Welcome to Power Up. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. And I'm Lord Garrett. Power Ups is an acronym. It's so cool. It stands for playing, watching, reading. And this is something the Geek Bomb's been doing for a while now because I love finding out what everyone is up to, where it's video games or an app that you're playing, whether it's shows or a movie that you're watching or whether it's comics or a book that you're reading. We're here on Trisha's live Twitch channel, which is pretty cool. And if you haven't, give her a sub or a follow, a little <laughs> bit of love there. But you could also be watching this on Geek Bombs YouTube. And if you are, thank you so much. Give it a like, give it a follow, give it a sub. <laughs> yes, do all of those things. Today is an extra special episode of Power Up because as you know, every other week, we do a guest episode of the show. And Maude and I are so stinking excited for today's guest. Today's guest is dun 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 dun, Sam Bunning. Hello! Thank you for having me. That was a wonderful yeah. introduction. Yay! How are you? Are you wearing pineapples for me? Yes, and it's a romper too. Just wanted to brag about that for a second. Mm -hmm. Hold on, when you say romper, you mean the is it all in one? Mm hmm. Short, so small. When, so when you've got to pee, mm -hmm. the whole thing just comes down? Yep, like a kid going to the bathroom by himself for the first time. <laughs> Sam, I need, you, I need you to model this, please. Oh, me? Yeah, mm. you said it's a romper, and then you didn't show us. So oh, can you? That was a little rude. Mm. All right, so I'm just in a chair right now. So be yeah. careful with that leg, right. though. We don't want to twitch terms of service. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Good call. Don't All show right. legs. No feet, no legs. <laughs> no feet, no legs. Not gonna get you banned. Very nice. So Sam, how are you, man? Are you sheltering in place? What's going on? Oh, yeah. No, I'm uh, with my girlfriend and we've been sheltering in place since because uh, I was doing a project with a company, like doing some post work early March. So basically, I started and immediately started working from home, which d was not good for what I was doing. But it's not, not been so bad. Like everything's been pretty good. I've been watching a lot of TV, been playing a lot of video games. Yay. We are excited to delve into that because video games are something that you you played sometimes. And I would play a lot of, and I'd mm -hmm. be like, we're, Sam, we are on SourceFed Nerd. Uh, I'm going to need to play more video games, my man. Maggie Whitmer. Yeah, but I wanted, to play, I wanted to play Super Mario Sunshine just one more time and never yeah. beat it. Never Aww. beat it. Uh, Maggie <laughs> Whitmer in chat says, Sam is our friend. Sam, Sam is our friend. Sam, Sam is our friend. Sam is our friend. And Sam. I got mushrooms on my chicken sandwich. Get it. Sam, for, That's, oh, uh, we're talking like before. everybody knows who's who you are because I feel like everybody here should know who you are, but just in oh, case yeah. they don't, where would people know you from on the internet, Sam? You'd probably know me from SourceFed, SourceFed Nerd from way back when, uh, doing videos with all these lovely people here. And also Only Stupid Answers is a nerdy podcast I do with DJ Waldridge. And um, as of right now, yeah, I'm doing that. Also, if you guys want to, for free, I've been doing this uh, comic book uh, live show every Thursday on my Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter accounts on way too many places. But if you want to join, 1 p.m. PST, I've been reading comics that you can find for free online, baby. Those are the good ones. Hold on. So when you say comic book club, you you choose the comic and then you read it mm -hmm. together? Mm-hmm. Do you want to come on? Do you want to come and read comic? Do you want to give me your comicsology password again? No, no, no. I pick comics that are free to read on Hoopla. Do you remember when you remember when you gave me access to like the Holy Grail? And then yeah, I, you're like, oh, I panicked. I changed my password. And I was just like, oh. yeah, I gave it to you and like seven other people. And then I paired it to my Amazon account and I didn't want people buying stuff. I, I get it. I yeah, yeah, my yeah, credit okay. card. I okay, get that hurts That's a little not, less. That makes sense. I, could, I don't trust you. Well, that, well, that far. Guys. Oh, so Sam what comics have you covered? I've, I've talked about um, um, DC New Frontier. We did Lock and Key because the Netflix series. We did... Uh, 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 Clapping uh, for uh, Lock uh, and uh, Key, uh, by the way, not the Netflix series. Continue. Yeah, same. Uh -huh. uh, Sandman, we did volume one, and I had my girlfriend on because she's a really big Neil Gaiman fan? Gaiman? Yes. Gaiman? Gaiman. Um, Gaiman. Gaiman, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's got to be the right one. And I did... Giant Days, because that is hands down my favorite comic book of all time. It's a graphic novel from IDW, oh, from Boombox, from Boombox. And they just signed an overall deal with Netflix to make live action and, anim and animated adaptations of their properties. And I really hope they do that one, because that one uh, kicks all the A. It's a great one. Okay. All of the A. One so, Thursdays. Ma, uh, hmm? Sam, did you say which comic book you guys are reading for the next episode of Comic Book Club? 
Yeah, someone gave. Well, no, actually, I'm, I'm going to announce it uh, on Sunday. Um, and I do pick shorter books. I don't do like a whole series or anything. Just I just do a just smaller one. Um, well, I'm between just two. I want to do Why the Last Man, but. Sam, we've lost you, my friend. Come back to uh, us. This is what happens when I try to push for information. Yes, you push for sensitive information, and Sam's going to pretend he's totally frozen and didn't hear the question so that he doesn't have to answer it. I think that's what's going to happen. Hey, buddy, you there? Hey, Sam, are you uploading something else? <laughs> is your girlfriend uploading something else? Are you my friend? There we are go. Are they my chicken sandwich? Am I back? You're back. Yeah, you're back. Okay, sorry, gang. The timing uh, was but... perfect, though. I'll give you that. <laughs> I could hear you guys. I just couldn't do anything about it. Uh, um, sorry. What was the question? Tell us what the comic is. Damn it! <laughs> oh my between, gosh! I'm between a couple. I want to do Why the Last Man, but the the, the premise is about a, a virus that kills all men on Earth. It's a little dark, and I'm trying to f figure out if I can do a different one. But I do really want to talk about Why the Last Man. It's really good. I might do that or Saga. Because everyone, every comic book fan always says, you got to read Saga. It's yeah. comic book fans, The Wire or Breaking Bad. Because everyone's like, well, you got to read that. If you're going to read a comic, you got to read that one first. Yeah, I know. It I've is great. heard about that. Okay. Um, you're, you're doing comic book club. Your girlfriend's doing a book club. Can you tell us a little bit mm -hmm. about that, where people can catch that? Because she's covered Ready Player One recently. Ooh. That's a nice nice shout, by the way. I appreciate it. It's Drunk Poet Society, anywhere you can get your podcast. Uh, Taylor, my girlfriend, and her friend Felice uh, just pick a book, and then they create a cocktail based on the book. They create it all themselves, based usually with what they have in their house. They don't go crazy with it. Um, and Tell then they, me more, Sam. They, uh, yeah, it's right? great. They, they rate the um, – well, I went on and I did a Watchmen pod, uh, review. That was their first graphic novel, and we – I made a Dr. Manhattan Manhattan drink. As so I made it blue with blue curacao. It was sweet as hell. It was okay. <laughs> they also rate the uh, cocktails at the end of the episode. And that one got an okay score. It was like drinking cotton candy. But okay. I don't Oi. think that's the worst thing. It's 18 rough. year old mode is like, yes. Yeah, same. Cotton candy vodka. I definitely don't Ugh. remember drinking that. Do you remember when we did the uh, booze test on SourceFed, where it was like we had the most ridiculous liqueurs and we had to try and guess the flavor? Didn't we win? I think so. I do remember it. I just don't remember if we won. I don't. I usually they remember when I won. They kept trying to make us drink. Yeah. But mind you, though, I think our um, drunk riddles videos possibly hit nine million views. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I always. That's still on my resume. <laughs> it's a. It, it always has a caveat on it because it's like. I mean, it's impressive, but also at the same time, I'm plastered in it. So I don't like yeah. it. It doesn't give like a really good, it's not a good representation of how I host, but. No. It, it, well, I, um, but also 9 million views. You know, we weren't allowed to do that in my source fed day. Mm -mm. In the, I mean, in the prior really good class, reason. we never drank anything. We, we had none of that. And also, you guys are sharing all these fun memories of source fed videos you did together. And the only times I got to interact with Sam as a host were when he was the main host for the Four Human People's channel. Oh, yeah. Shout and uh, and I, it, it, I, like, what I what I remember is like, Sam, the intern, goes to adult con with Steve. Like, that was like yeah. your big thing. So th that's what I remember about getting to host with Sammy Basher, <laughs> which is yeah, no. a very different what Maud remembers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got. I came out of my shell a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit, and uh, yeah, those were those were dark times. <laughs> the Four Human People's Channel. We did some cool stuff, but the the show where I I found like designs and and sold merch and stuff. I don't even know if it's on the channel anymore. To be completely honest, I've never gone to go look for it, and I don't want to watch it. It's not going to make me feel good when I watch it. It's going to be embarrassing. Oh, none of that made your hosting real. I, shockingly, I think it maybe was in the quick montage at the end just to have some different backgrounds in there. I don't think it was okay. nothing prominently featured. Got it. What are some of your favorite memories of SourceFed, Sam? I mean, we got to do a lot of really cool, like, any time we got to travel at all, like, if for anything, was always cool. Uh, really, I try to travel as much as I can throughout the year, and so does and my girlfriend. I had a bunch of trips planned, which are being reconsidered currently, because that makes sense, and that's a big big bummer but uh anytime we could travel was um 
uh, was always a big plus. Uh, doing videos with either of you guys was always a blast. And doing like table talks, even when they got uh, to the point where we were all tired of them, which was pretty early oh, yeah. on. <laughs> that, that, all, the, all the same stories, like twice, because we'd forgotten if we'd said the story. Yeah. Yeah, no. Those uh, those got a little tiresome, but uh, I don't know. We always got to at least try something new, and that was always fun. And uh, I've definitely, I definitely miss going to an office to work because I've now fully burnt out working from home. I'm done with that. No more. I don't want to wear sweatpants the whole time. I want to wear sweatpants in an office. No office. <laughs> <laughs> offices, offices have started feeling like prison to me. That's that's how I am. I'm much well. Yeah. I like to work in studios that are elsewhere, but I don't like to work in offices that are elsewhere. Okay. Sam, what is that, that Superman sense. curl you got going over your forehead? Oh, I've been doing this like it's like this hair curl smoothie treatment. And I'm done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bought it, and it by the way, it smells delicious. Like it smells Does like it smells like pineapple stool. It's it, it's like pineapple mango, and I just really want to just try a little bit of it. Don't eat so. Dude, you're don't putting the so cool in tropical. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. with with the dab on the exit, let's move on to a segment we call "Blast from the Past." Blast Welcome, the past. Amy. Yay! Yeah, a lot of stuff happened in April in the past. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. So we're going to just go by sections, by power sections, starting off with playing. Um, on April 8th, 2001, do you guys have any guesses what happened? April, Mario Sunshine. Close. Dr. Mario, 64. Oh, Only because ooh. you said Mario. You say uh, Dr. Yeah. Mario, and I'm immediately like, the original NES game. And then you said 64, and I got a little, little sad. Shish, yeah. I played I played Dr. Mario on the NES. Like this is when we had to rent the system only during the school holidays and then rent the games. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that's what I used to do. But I played that one and Dr. Mario has some of the best music. Like hands down. I, I there's like one tune that's just such a it's a little ditty. It's Goodbye. good. It's real good. Dr. Mario is a real good time. What about um what do you think came out April 28th, 1980? Oof. You have five seconds. Five. Um, so born. Does anyone Ten memorize three. release dates? Is that like yeah, a thing no. people do? Some people, yeah, some people do, especially for Ooh, movies. Movies. Ooh. Well, it was Game and Watch Ball oh. was released. Um, so that's the first title in the series. Sam, you're saying, oh, so you're a fan? I mean, in Smash, I always go for him, and I don't know how to use all his moves. I just like the character a lot. I have to Google who is this. Yeah, guy? I don't. I don't know Game and Watch Ball. Tell me so, more. So this oh, is- Oh, Neil Gaiman watch. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> wow, that was good. Left your own title. Thank you. That was me. Oh, talking. that dude, I remember that. Yeah, when I was in after school care, they had those really poor handheld, yeah, games like Donkey Kong and stuff like that. Okay. There was like 60 of those video games and the yeah. games were actually released a year before Donkey Kong, which is crazy to think about games before Donkey Kong, at least for me. <laughs> He's OG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was one of the most successful products in the early 80s, so yay, Game & Watch. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on to Watch. Oh, watching. Game & Watch. Watching. Watch there you go. go. Nice segue. I brought it. I brought it back. Yeah. Um, this is by far some of the most exciting news I think I've ever said. Um, but yeah, Parks & Rec. <clears throat> I'm going to tie in two things here. Whoa, Mod, I don't think you've seen it based off of your reaction. <gasps> okay, so Parks & Rec premiered on April 9th. 2009 they um had seven seasons 125 episodes from 2009 to 2015 i am a massive fan of parks and rec um lately uh something huge happened so amy poehler went on instagram and said hey guys we're gonna have a brand new episode of parks and rec so it's been gone for about five years now yeah. um they're creating a new episode they're all gonna be filming it from their house sis um separately of course it will premiere Thursday, April 30th, so just a few days from now, on NBC. Parks and Rec is teaming up wow. with State Farm to help Feeding America. So it's during this quarantine, which is so exciting because we get to see these characters again. I'm so Anyone? excited. I'm a Thank huge, you. no, huge fan. Season one blows. Season two through <laughs> uh, got it. is, is great. Sam, tell yeah. us what you love about it. Oh, it's, no, it's, per, it's, 
it's you know how the office got good and it was good 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 and then it had a very sharp decline and it was just kind of like a slight it just was like a careening off a cliff near the end i'll say it i'll be <laughs> yeah. honest it was not good near the end parks and rec it does the opposite it has a little dip in the beginning and then the quality only goes up from there they uh, add in ben wyatt played by adam scott and uh, Chris Traeger, played by Rob Lowe, and immediately the show makes sense. You fully understand who each of the characters are and the way they're able to play with the dynamics and make local government interesting without it becoming political, which is, it's such a fine line to walk. Mm -hmm. They nail it, though, throughout the entire series. And um, also the last season is set in the future, but now it's in the past because we passed it. It's great what they try to predict. It's very charming what they try to predict about what happens in the future, and some is a little true. Okay. Yeah, so, I didn't make it after the pilot. Yeah, no, the I, first one. Like, I'm putting the nope in Leslie Nope on that one. No! <gasps> Sorry. That was really loud. <laughs> Sorry, podcast <laughs> listeners. I haven't really seen it, but I appreciate that you guys love it and you inspire me to want to check it out. Just skip How the first season. Just don't watch it. Okay. Just go right past it. Sure. Got it. Um, something that you should definitely not skip is um, watching all of the, the Marvel movies because two years ago it's been two years since infinity war came out came out april 27th wow. um today actually two years ago today was the time that i saw it It was a press screening of the morning i mean uh, we all remember this it was the whole thanos dem demands your silence all that jazz but i just can't believe it's been two years you know that's crazy that one yeah yeah, yeah that one's a big one day. yeah um now moving on to reading um what book do you think was published on April 10th, 1925. Mm. 1925. Uh, Charles Dickens. Three, two, nope, The Great Gatsby. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I that had to cover sense. that in high school. Yeah. And like, I did not put the cool in high school. Um, it just, it wasn't, I, when you have text and then you have to like draw out the themes yeah. and then write a four page essay on the themes of the book. I remember writing it going, what if the author, like we can't even corroborate this with the actual author. They're probably like, I didn't mean that at all. Or oops, that was an accident. But here we are doing this dissertation. I always thought that. Yeah, for a book that's writing about- really have that fleshed out. For a book that's about booze and sex, it should have been a lot more interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Yes, amen. Yeah. I, I fully erased that from my brain after reading it, and the same for Grapes of Wrath. Both of those just kind of fizzled out. Grapes of, of Wrath was an American curriculum only, and I think we spoke about that in SourceFed because you were like, I couldn't believe, I think you made a reference, and I was like, Grape, Grapes of Wrath sounds like a really angry wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it Which, should be. There's got to be at not... least 79 companies with that name. There has to be. Someone it. work on it that. Has to be. Um, if there's not, somebody here has to do it, or somebody in chat, do it. Yeah. Fun little fact with The Great Gatsby, if you guys watching or listening happen to have the rare first edition uh, with its original dust jacket, it has been sold between $100,000 and $150,000. So oh just keep that oh in God. mind. Everybody call grandma. <laughs> <laughs> now moving out. on to the final piece of Blast from the Past, still in reading. Um, this one's a little, it's interesting because I don't think I knew all this information. Um, Shakespeare was born and also died, this sounds weird, in the same month, different years, of course. We don't know when he was actually born. Did you guys know that? Mm -mm. Oh, really? Yeah, we don't. We actually don't know. Um, really? The exact date of birth is not recorded. Yeah. It is most often celebrated in the world on the 23rd of April. Now, his baptism is recorded on Wednesday, April 26th, 1564. Baptisms typically took place within three days of a new birth. Parents were instructed to ensure that their children were baptized no later than the first Sunday after their birth, which means that he was born no earlier than the previous Sunday, the 23rd of April. Shakespeare was another insane. reason why English class for all of high school was just absolutely awful. See, now we I got a hard movies. disagree with that. I got a hard disagree with that. When we finally got into Shakespeare, I was like, oh, thank God, something interesting. Um, Shakespeare is like, oh my God, it'd be like, read a passage, and it's like, doth thou art flourish above the knights of yonder. Oh, and get like, down with your romantic mean? self, Maud. It's not that bad. It was the only time uh, we got to dress up in sixth grade. We got to do go. uh, Julius Caesar, and we got nice. to dress up, and uh, I got to be one of the 
people that betray Caesar. I just had a, I had one of those collapsible knives. And I was like, oh, cool. And like, that's all I remember. I mean, just take but, uh, like a big bowl of that iambic pentameter and just chew it up, right? Like, now that being said, I was a classical theater major in college. So a <gasps> little disclaimer. And I was like, I'm going to make my living doing Shakespeare on stage. And then I graduated and realized no one pays you to do Shakespeare on stage. <laughs> Ever. What are you talking about? You don't Where? make money doing that. There is a Shakespeare improv group that was probably one of some of the best improv I've ever seen in my life. They would improv a Shakespeare-esque kind of play on the spot and they would use iambic pentameter. Pen, I, I am the pentameter. <laughs> um, I totally know which, uh, which theater group you're talking about. I have friends that are in it. Oh, Ooh. my God. They yeah. are like they make Shakespeare sassy, and that's did really you hot. did you see their Pulp Fiction done as a Shakespeare play? They did the no. movie Pulp Fiction, but all in iambic pentameter. Good lord! If we're thinking of the same theater company, yep. Does that get you going? Be honest. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, get me going, like put me in the mood. No, get me going, like this is the most beautiful poetry I've ever seen. Yes. yes. I've never seen it, so I cannot say, but probably. Um, it's yeah. also way, in my opinion, it is way more interesting to see Shakespeare performed than it is to read it. Um, it's very, very hard to just read something that's written in iambic pentameter and, you know, with that kind of old English language and comprehend it from reading it. Whereas when you have an actor with props and a setting who is emoting and they're very clear on the intention of what they're saying, it is way easier to understand what they're Great. saying. Absolutely agree. Yes. I just don't, again, I don't want to analyze. Mm -hmm. You just want to enjoy it. There it is. It's that like was a cool you, the past. It's like when you yeah. go see opera, you know, you don't really know what they're singing, but you get the gist of what they're singing because of the emotion. Oh, thank God. Thank God you said that because I've never understood it. I've only seen one in person and then I, the Bugs Bunny cartoon like, like 30 times, but like you just get the gist of it. You yeah. have the costumes, the lightning, someone died. And then they're upset about it. But they're screaming in the same cadence when they're sad or angry. But you get it. You understand the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Well, Amy, thank you so much for uh, Blast from the Past. That was really fun. Take You're welcome. Up. Yeah. Well, Yay. we're going to get back into PWR, playing, watching, reading, playing, and being first. So don't go anywhere. Because Sam Basher, our guest for today's episode, will be delving into what he's currently playing. Yay.